much. And the next session is Thailand Tourism, striking the right balance between quality and quantity. So this topic is really interesting because we'll, we'll dig deep into how tourism industry could be a driving factor to support economic growth in Thailand. And this session, we received an honor from Minister of Tourism and Sports, Ms. Gopgan Suryasat Watanawarangun, to provide an insight information about current situation of tourism industry in Thailand. Ms. Gopgan is currently dedicated to developing the Thai tourism industry and for it to grow sustainably in the years to come, and also for Thailand to become a top tourist destination in all aspects. And the next panelist, for this morning, Mr. Shanin Thonawanik, Chairman of Executive Committee, Dusit Thani, will also join us in this session. Mr. Shanin has been Chairman of the Thai Chamber of Commerce's Tourism and Service Business Committee since March 2015, and has previously been the President of Thai Hotel Association, as well as the President of the ASEAN Hotel and Restaurant Association. This panel, will be run by our moderator, Mr. Kasidit Junawat from Patria Securities. Ladies and gentlemen, may I now invite all the panelists and the moderator on the stage. Pad Thai was created during the regime of Field Marshal Black Pibun Songkram, signifying Thai nationalism at the time. Pad Thai has been famous since World War II. Easy to cook and healthy. Today, anyone and any nationality can enjoy the dish. Noodles are made from rice. The same grain used for rice with barbecue pork, rice with chicken, crispy rice, and chilled rice. Thais love Jan noodles and name it after Jan Thaburi province. Known not just for delicious noodle, Jan Thaburi is also famous for traditional juries and mats and the durian fruit. Bean sprouts come from green beans. Thais learn how to grow bean sprouts in our elementary schools, but we also learn Thai classical dance, Thai classical music, Thai royal dance, and Thai drum dance. The sauce is made from a mixture of tamarind, originated from Africa. Tamarind can also be found in the fertile soils of Pechabun province in the north of Thailand. Locals believe the tamarind tree is holy and use it to ward off evil spirits such as the flying ghost, the glowing ghost, the hungry ghost, also Dracula. Pad Thai is not complete without dry shrimps. Good dry shrimps come from the south of Thailand, which is known for a beautiful coral reef. There must be tofu in Pad Thai. This can be found in Chinatown. Simply dice it, stir it and fry it with a sweet radish and eggs. Pad Thai is normally served on a plate, but if you prefer authenticity, try having it on banana leaf with banana blossoms on the sides. Banana tree trunks are also used for Loi Gratong Festival to feed pigs and also the practicing Muay Thai. Order Pad Thai anywhere, on the street or in a fancy restaurant. Eat it on land or on water, everywhere in Thailand. This is the story of Pad Thai, there are thousands of other stories to discover. Discover your amazing stories in amazing Thailand. Good morning and uh, sawadee kap. Um, my name is Kasidit. I am your transport analyst at Patra Securities, a, a partner of uh, Bank of America, Merrill Lynch. And uh, it is my very best uh, a uh, pleasure to be seated to two of Thailand's most uh, prominent figures in the tourism industry. So I think happen. Ladies and gentlemen, um, tourism is and has been a vital part of Thai economy as long as I uh, recall. The industry is now directly contributing over 14% of Thai GDP as of first quarter this year, and um, more if we also consider the multiply effect. Uh, over the past four years, our country, Thailand, has seen tremendous growth in the inbound tourist volume, uh, notably from emerging markets, especially uh, uh, Chinese. Given that relatively less uh, mature economies compared to traditional markets, such as Europe, um, segmentation, length of stay, and spending power tend to vary 
uh, much more according to the uh, economics uh, condition, currencies, and political events. Today, uh, our aim is to explore the viewpoints of industry uh, private uh, participants as well as the public sector on how Thailand tourism industry can expand uh, the boundaries and ensure a sustainable growth path uh, of quality tourism over the long term. Um, lady first. I'll start with Kun Kop Gan. What do you find most attractive about Thai tourism industry? Uh, what's our unique selling point, and uh, what do you believe that our competing offers will find it difficult to replicate? Uh, good morning, everyone. I think, first of all, uh, I would like to say that tourism in Thailand um, is not economy. People try to think that this is one of the economic tools. But I believe we have come so far with growth and hopefully to continue to maintain this kind of growth because we believe that we are doing tourism as a way of friendship creation, people to people and heart to heart. We do it with passion and that is the key of the success. Um, this year, we think the target is 32 million interna uh, international tourist arrival. I do believe that we can exceed to maybe about 33 million, which is about 10% increase from last year. Why do we think that we can do, do this? Do, uh, and why do we think that we can still attain our high target to be a quality leisure destination? Partly because um, the spending of the tourists to Thailand is also increasing. Um, this year, we believe that the spending of the tourists per day will be more than 5,000 baht. This is about 10% or so, about 10.9% increase from last year. Quality doesn't mean we only want the rich people. It's not that. It's not also mid to high. Quality leisure destination or quality tourist to us, meaning everyone. We welcome and embrace everyone to Thailand. But how to make sure that they stay a bit longer, they spend more per day, per year, and they do return with happiness. And that is important. 70% of the number of international tourists arrival to Thailand they are repeaters, which is one of the highest, I believe, in the world. 70%, they, they do return. I have asked many people, how many times have you visited Thailand? A lot of them will think, because they cannot count, uncountable. Some people said maybe more than 50 times or 100 times. But anyway, meaning a lot of people do return. But then again, you might say that whether this is a threat or not, because the world is coming to tourism, this is fact. Japan, America, China, everyone declare their higher target in order to attract more tourists. Because UNWTO has already announced that at least every year, the increment of the tourists I mean, around the world, people will travel at least 4% annually growth, annually growth. Everyone wants tourists. Everyone wants revenue from tourism. We think that that is the opportunity. But then at the same time, the threat to us that maybe they can skip Thailand for one year or two years. They might go to Myanmar, our lovely neighbor. They might go to Vietnam. They might go to Indonesia. Or they might go, definitely go to Japan. But they are doing very aggressively. Why do we think we can compete? We show the movie. You might have seen this many times. Or if you haven't, I, I, I want you to, to have a look at it. Because that is Thailand. We are bringing the authenticity of our, of our country. TAT has made research why people keep returning to Thailand. 
Is it because we have beautiful beach? Is it because we have great mountain art and craft long history? People answer that actually, out of all, they do return because they like the Thai. We are friends of everyone. We are the second home of so many people. And this one, I believe, is the key success of us. It's the Thai-ness, it's the Thai people. And that's why we keep this and try to bring out more. Because Thai-ness doesn't mean only Bangkok. Bangkok is not Thailand. Thai-ness means the authenticity of each place. We are introducing new destinations in Thailand. Last year, 12, 12 new destinations. This year, another 12. And the revenue from the tourism, all of those 12 new places, last year increased about 15%. This year, about 8%. And the 12 new cities of this year, up to now, from uh, January 1st, up to now, about 11%. So meaning that we have new products to attract them with the authenticity of the local people. Thai food is one of them. And you can, can see from the story that with, with, with that, that is a mixture of everything. We also have new product, new product to, to attract the people. Um, do you play sports? We are now introducing sp uh, Thailand as the sport hub of, of ASEAN, meaning that if you, in Japan, when TAT is selling the product, they say that dream run in amazing Thailand. So if you want marathon in Bangkok, Bangkok marathon, Chiang Mai marathon, Phuket marathon, midnight marathon, you just select. I believe some of you love to do exercise. This is the, the trend, and we are keeping that trend. So a lot of people are coming to Thailand for more product, and that is why we believe that with the authenticity of what we have, plus the new product that we introduce. Besides uh, that, um, I might speak a bit long. I'm so sorry. You know, I have so, so many things to sell. Um, <laughs> that's, that's my cap. <laughs> um, we are aiming to be wedding and honeymoon destination. We are number one of wedding and honeymoon of Indian market. Uh, some of you might know already. And the Indian, the increment of the number of Indian to Thailand this year actually increased about 12%. They, um, meaning that this year may be about 1.1 million like, people coming to, 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 to Thailand. And we will be the host of Wedding Planner Congress, which is the highest of the wedding planner uh, activities in Thailand next year in about April or May in Phuket. Talking about the global event, next month, September 27, UNWTO has already selected Bangkok to celebrate the World Tourism Day in Bangkok and then in Chiang Mai. So no matter what, you might say that something happened in Wuhan. So whether or not there's an effect to us or not. But UNWTO has already announced on CNN and BBC that they still believe in Thailand, and they will not cancel. So Mr. Tarif Rai the, um, the, 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 the chairman, the president himself with his wife, will be coming to Bangkok and then to, to Konkan. And the WTTC, the people in the tourism will know the WTTC. This is the private sector. World Travel and Tourism Council, meaning um, they are the CEO of the hotel chain, airlines, car rentals, everything connected to tourism, but in the global, I mean, later on, Kun Chenin maybe can, can say this, the global of the tourism business in Thailand. They will have global summit in Bangkok next year. Uh, Kun David, Mr. David also said that whatever happened, the beauty, the beauty DC still have confidence in Thailand. And they are coming, I think, in February or March, we will be the host city for the, the WTTC Global Summit. And so, wedding new, new product. Last but not least, I, was, I, I would, would like to say that another thing that why we believe that we are growing strong is the ASEAN 
connect. ASEAN market is growing up. People believe that we grow because of Chinese. This year, we might reach about 10 million Chinese arrival. But some people will think that this is risky or not to best, I mean, to, I mean, rely on one big nat uh, nationality. They are coming. They are growing. But we also have many other markets that, at, that is still growing. People believe that Europeans stop coming to Thailand. Maybe we don't have other market. That is not true. Okay? So ASEAN is another big, big market for us. You know that ASEAN are growing. Myanmar, Cambodia, Laos, Vietnam, Indonesia, they are growing. We are the second home to many of them, meaning that weekend, if they have nothing to do, they come to, they come to Thailand. So the f number one tourist arrival to Thailand is China. Second is Malaysia. Third is Japanese. Fourth is Korean. And I have some figures to tell you, Naha, because people think that up till now, Russian has, is returning to Thailand. Huh? Up to now, up to yesterday, the growth of Russian uh, tourists, huh? tourists to Thailand growth is 20%. From UK, 10.4%. From Italy, 9.14%. From Germany, 9.7%. Last but not least, our dear American friends, guess, 13% increase. So all market increase. So with new product, new destination, and the identity of Thailand that we still keep. So that's why we believe that the growth that we are now having we have confidence that we can keep the momentum until the end of the year and the, need, and the years to come. Uh, I would like to hear from uh, Kun Chenin as well, especially from your long uh, experience in the global hospitality industry. What makes Thailand unique and how, it, uh, how our attractiveness have uh, actually evolved over time? Uh, thank you. Uh, let's, let's we step back a little bit. Um, in terms of the world tourism. Uh, we have seen now the, th the three waves of tourism in, in the world after the Second World War. The first wave is in the 1950s and early 1960s. And they are American because they're the one who have the most wealth. At that time, America had maybe 100 or 200 million people. And they were the one who go around the world and dictate on what type of accommodation and what type of restaurant and what type of product or place to see. After that, we have the second wave, and there are the European, um, maybe from the 1960s to 1970s. And actually, the European are the ones who put Thailand on the map in terms of beach destination, because this is what they want. At that time, we talk about Western Europe, which consists of maybe about 200 million or so at that time. The third wave is the wave of Asia. The big difference between the first, second, and third wave is the number of Asian, we talk about 4.4 billion people. So when we look at what's happening to Thailand today, it's the same picture that we can see almost everywhere. If you look at the hotel in New York, if you talk to the hotel in London, the, the growth rate are coming from Asia. So what we see in, in Thailand is not something that is unique. It's the, the third wave of international traveler will be not, not, the, not mostly, but the biggest growth will be coming from Asia. And the good thing about Thailand is that about 80% of the people who travel are traveling within the region. 
So when we talk about the Thailand and the location where we are and what we have to offer, we are in a very unique position to capture that three to four billion people. And if you look at the economy of, of almost every country in Asia, it's growing the fastest. The wealth, the middle class is growing the fastest. So where are those people going to go? We, we have seen nothing yet. And if you talk to many people, like the airline industry, if you talk to Boeing or Airbus, more than 60% of their air, airplanes are being sold in this part of the world. If you're talking to some of the luxury good products, sometimes they are not willing to let you know the numbers, but more than 60% of what they sell, what they sell, is in this part of the world. And if they count the number of Chinese or the Asian who are waiting in line at the Louis Vuitton store and on um, uh, Chong Se Lee say, the number will be even greater. This is where, in Asia, this is where the number of people live, the number of wealth, new wealth have been created. And one of the first things that they're going to do, besides buying home, besides buying new cars, is travel. And Thailand is in a good place. And people always ask me why we are so popular. And I usually tell them, sorry, not Pad Thai, huh? but I usually tell them, think of Tom Yam Gung. You know, you can tell the character of the country, of the people in the country, by the food. Okay, sometimes I have disagreement with some of my Singaporean friends because they still think that Hainanese chicken rice comes from Singapore, which is not true. But you can tell the character of the people by the food. And Tom Yam Kung is what represents Thailand. There's not many countries that can find so many flavors in one dish. And this is what we have to offer. And looking out for the next five or 10 years, the question that we have, and I think this is what the, the minister and this government is trying to do, the issue is not whether we're going to continue to grow. And you know, people, if you look at the statistic, the number of ASEAN coming to Thailand is almost the same as Chinese and actually are growing faster. And just for your information, Minister, I just met someone from China the other day. And um, every year, China have about 8 million new married. So people get married, about 8 million of them. Of the 8 million, about in the past, because of um, the, the economy or the wealth, most of them have wedding in simple forms. Now 30% of them are going out. Of course, the biggest destination in China is Hainan. But of, of 8 million people, now 10% of them start going overseas for their wedding. And of 10% that are going overseas, 50% of them coming to Thailand. So this is going to be one of the biggest growth markets, not just India. But we are in a location where we cannot help the growth. We will continue to be very strong in terms of growth rate. The issue is how to manage that well, and I think this is what, what the minister and the government is trying to do. I'm not supporting the government, okay, but um, to, to tell you frankly, I'm, I'm writing a book and hopefully next time after New Year when you come, you help to buy because it's for charity, it's called uh, Thai Tourism, the early days. And you, you're gonna see what, how we have gone through um, various stages of development. I try to do PR for my new book, sorry. So uh, add-on questions on the third wave of uh, Asian tourism growth. Um, investor, we constantly interact with, especially on airports of Thailand, if you invest in it, mostly we have uh, spoken to each other. Um, they like the changing trend of, um, of, of the third wave simply because of high growth. 
But from a hotelier and a lodging operator perspective, what are the implications? And um, what opportunity, uh, opportunities or, or threat uh, do you see from that uh, uh, third, uh, uh, third changing wave? When, when, when we have a big change like this, and when there is a big number, big volume coming in, it's not easy. Um, I still remember having, having a disagreement with my general manager maybe about five or ten years ago uh, because he doesn't like to accept certain nationality for wedding because he said they are loud. But you know, we, we cannot help that. Uh, the, the, the trend of the world, the trend of traveling, of the travel industry in the world, of tourism in the world is changing and will change so much. We, we are living in an era where we don't know how, how we're going to be doing because of the huge size, mainly of the Asian population base who's going to be traveling. Um, so we had to learn how to manage that. We had to learn how to adapt uh, in terms of, of uh, simple things like a food. Um, you know, many, many years ago, if you look back, for those who have been to Thailand, I, but I think most of you are much younger than, than, than me, but you, you're not going to see many, many Thai, top Thai hotels having Thai restaurants, for the example. But today, because of the popul popularity of the food, almost everyone have them. So th we are changing slowly, and the new group of people who are coming to Thailand also change. I still, I still remember, because we have been in the business a long time, when the first group of American people, I still remember the company name from New York, and the Americans came to Thailand in groups, and they wear the same hat, because that's the way they can distinguish themselves when they're moving around. When, you, when people complain about, let's say, Chinese traffic, who coming here in their uniform, in their hat or in their bag, it's the same thing what the Americans have done in the 1950s. And that also will change. We have now seen a lot of individual travelers from China, or from other Southeast Asian countries, or even from India. And they're going to get more sophisticated. They're going to know, know which restaurant they should go to. They're going to know which hotel they should stay. So that is a change in, in the time. The, one other thing that we feel quite positive is even if, with the change in the market mix, the number, I just talked to the minister just before for this, the number of people who come to stay in Thailand have not really changed. It's still nine days. That means the number of Europeans who come to stay one or two or three weeks, they continue to come to stay. And it also means that the Asian who used to come to Thailand just for four or five days, now they stay longer because I believe they enjoy the country more. So if, if, we, see, if we see another picture, let's say the number of Asians coming in and the number of they drop quite a lot, this is a worrisome. But this is not the case for Thailand. I think compared to, let's say, Singapore, which is, I think, about two days something, or, or Hong Kong, we still have nine days. That means for 30 million tourists coming to Thailand, if you multiply that by nine days, how many room night we have in this country? And I think this is one of the things that um, uh, the ministry and I, we are trying to push to make sure that the 300, 400 million days that they stay in Thailand, we will create something good for them. So opportunity is there. So may, may I add on? Please. <laughs> Some figures also. <laughs> to, to support Kun Chanin, and, and I maybe will be beneficial to you. For the Chinese, you might think that maybe they stay less of course, they stay less, but growing also. They used to stay coming to Thailand maybe five days. Now, seven, eight days. They are increasing. And spending per head per day of Chinese 
more than average. If you think that they come and they don't spend, no, they, they spend more than the average also per day. And for the Chinese, um, as Kun Chenin has said, the trend is changing rapidly. We see a lot of them in the past coming in a group tour, yes. But FIT, which is the, the, the word in the tourism sector, free independent travelers, meaning they come by themselves. Yeah. FIT is increasing everywhere, especially in China. People say that um, uh, in, the past, in the past few years, people come in a group tour because they cannot speak. Their parents cannot speak, so they come in a group tour because they don't know what to do. But the young generation, they come with this. Even they cannot speak, but they come with a mobile phone. FAT in China, this is a statistic coming from CNTA, which is like TAT of China, that I think in, in one or two years, FIT will grow to almost like 70% in China. So they travel by themselves. Even the first time no longer have to be in group tour because of the technology. They know how to do with this and, and, and they travel. And this one, how can we help? We are preparing this um, in, in the ministry together with the private sector and related parties. We are trying to develop tourism gateway of Thailand, meaning how to centralize all the information of, of the country so that the FIT can have the, from pre to post of the trip, they can understand everything of Thailand with this budget, with this amount of time, with this type of character, the tourism gateway should be able to, to let them have choices, 10 choices, 20 choices, how to travel and have happiness in Thailand. So we are doing this and the first phase will be launched next month and we will continue to improve this so that for the, FA, the growth of the FIT, not only actually, not only Chinese, but also the ASEAN people. So even without the group tour, so we will make sure that they know how to discover Thainess in the amazing Thailand, and they can do the booking by themselves. Um, besides that, um, another thing that I would like to share with you that, yes, the Chinese are coming for the wedding. And now, you know the trend, I'm not so sure you are that kind of trend. It's not only wedding, eh? we, in the past we are doing wedding and honeymoon. Yeah. Now pre-wedding. They come for photo taking. Do they just want to take photo before they before they get married? So the pre-wedding market is growing for the Chinese in Thailand also. So the new trend of the people around the world. We are trying to cap. Last but not least, I would like to also give you the figure to support what Kun Chenin has said. Last year, 29.8 million international tourists arrival to Thailand. 7 million Chinese, 7, 7 point something, ASEAN to Thailand, 7 million. And that is why this is also growing. It's another group that we believe that we are trying to, to, to take care of them and, and, and make sure that the growth of their country will benefit to the tourism of Thailand. Why can that be possible? This one, I have to compliment on our airline partners. Connectivity between Thailand and ASEAN country is beyond capital to capital. That is norm. They are now connecting capital to tier two, tier two to tier two, to tier two to tier three cities. So we are now talking, uh, two, three weeks ago, uh, we are discussing about way in Hanoi, uh, no, in, in Vietnam, connecting to Chiang Mai. This is the thing that is possible because of the airlines, um, low cost, normal airlines or, or whatnot, doing the, the work together with us. And so therefore, that, that is why we, we believe that either we call intra-ASEAN, we travel among each other, that is very important. But also for our other people long haul from like Europe, from America, to come to Myanmar, as I say now, Myanmar, very attractive. Vietnam, very attractive, Cambodia and whatnot. We introduce two countries, one destination. Where, wherever you want to go to our great neighboring country, 
come to Thailand or you end in Bangkok because we have all the connectivity. And this we launched since last year. We already connect, for example, Chiang Mai, Mandalay, Pagan, Naypyidaw, back to Bangkok. We are now connect not only Thai, Myanmar, also Thai, Lao, Thai, Cambodia, and this year we will start Thai, Vietnam. So far, we have uh, this quite, uh, discussed uh, quite a lot on uh, the, from a top-down perspective of, of the changing trend. Now, from a bottom-up, do you have any uh, target or, or mix in mind uh, which uh, segmentation Thailand would be aiming at or trying to grab that um, it's, not a, uh, it's not a changing uh, trend from a top-down force? Uh. The mix is very important because as our king has taught us, sufficiency economy, meaning that um, in order to attain sustainable growth, which is to us more important, we don't want high growth for two years and collapse again. Um, so it is very important that we balance the risk. The first balance is for the tourism industry this uh, he has called me many times, not only to look in the number, we also have to take care of the community, how to reduce the gap between the very rich and the very poor, and most important, the environment. We need to grow about waste management. We need to take care of water management. We need to be able to train up the people in order to, 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 cre to create the balance of the growth of the industry together with how to maintain our asset in order to be able to give them to the next generation. Another balance that we are doing, I have explained to you already, we, are, we value every nationality to Thailand because actually each, and, and each country has different benefit to us. Like Chinese, they come, I mean, they, um, they spend, they stay longer. European, a lot of people love the European, they stay 18 days, 19 days, that is great also. And, and also, they like to explore new places. ASEAN, we love them also very much because they like to spend. I asked them last year, I think, when TAT has given the award to the, I think, number 13th million. That is one of our gimmick. I went to Swanapum to, to give the award to a young lady, I think, only 20-some years old. I asked her, where are you from? She said, I'm from Vietnam. So I asked her, what are you doing here? She said, oh, my mother and my sister are already here. Yesterday, I'm here uh, to join the family. So I asked, what are you doing? Oh, we come and eat. We come to eat and we come to shop. And uh, where are you staying? They say they are staying. Sorry, not this hotel. No, um, no hotel, Siam, Siam Square. Meaning just to eat and shop. And so um, the ASEAN uh, is growing. And um, another, another little detail, if you go to Paragon, uh, you look at all the black hair, uh, you try to listen to their language, you know that a lot of them, not Chinese also and not Thai, they are from, from our neighboring countries. So um, we, we take the balance of ASEAN. But other countries as well, I went to Oceania, Australia, New Zealand, Australia also, the biggest spender in Asia and Pacific countries. Yesterday I came back from Iran. Iran is coming back. This year, we might strike 110 Iranian tourists to Thailand. So we are looking into many other countries, Kazakhstan also. I, I was in Kazakhstan. So many, uh, every region of, of, the, of, 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 of the world, the market is growing. And we work very hard. We just don't, I mean, okay, the number is already here. We don't have to do anything, no. We work harder in order to make sure that the balance is there in terms of, 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 of the nationality coming to, to, to us. Last but not least, why we think that um, um, the mix is, is very important. 
another, another kind of thing that I would like to, to, to let you know. We are now working as partner. Many times he scold me, but then we work as team as well. Public-private partnership is important nowadays. The world has changed. Things that happen to Hu Hin happens at any place, at any time around the world. We, we understand and we learn to cope with this. So therefore, we are working and learn from the lesson and how to create safety, security, and growth together. So now we have bigger team, not only Ms. Uh, TAT separately, airline separately, uh, or the hotel separately. Um, we are now working as a team in order to make sure that the growth that we are expecting in the future will be sustainable. Oh, last but not least, I have so many last. This is important personally to me. We view the value of the young generation. The young generation will be the one who make this possible. We have so many things that in the like Chamber of Commerce, in our industry also, we embrace the young generation to work with us and to make sure that the young generation will return to their hometown. It is a must because Thainess must be carried on by the Thai young generation. And now, I don't have to figure with you, but a lot of the young generation who educate abroad, a rich family in the past, they might not return to their hometown. They might work in, in other country. A lot of them returning. A lot of them are now working in the hotel business, in the service business, in their hometown. And that is why we believe, not only us maybe who have passion, but now we start to light up the passion in the hearts of the young generation. They will work with us. Yeah. Thank you. I would like to hear from a uh, uh, private operator perspective as well. Um, we have seen, seen the changes from the top down, but from a bottom up, um, which um, segment and which market or which mix would be a, a perfect um, uh, a blend for, uh, for, uh, for Thai hotel operator? When, when, when we look at this, um, I, I want to look at just the hotel. Right? When we sat down with the minister and with the government, try to say, okay, what next? Because we know that Thailand will continue to do very well in terms of number of visitors coming in. The, the decision was to make sure that the first change we're going to make is in, within Thailand itself. I don't think we can do enough promotion. We can spend money doing a lot of promotion overseas. It's have a little impact. The biggest change that I hope we can do in an, this past year, and maybe in the next year or two, is to change within Thailand. And that's why um, we are creating a lot of program to make more awareness of what do we have. Uh, you know, one of the program that, that minister helped to launch a few months ago is amazing Thai taste. You know, when we first try to look at, I even complained to the minister, when they try to look at, do we know how much money tourist industry spend on Thai food? The number that I received at first was completely wrong. And re later on, we realized that the number is about 500 billion baht, which is about 14, 14 billion US dollars. This is just the amount that tourists spend buying food in Thailand. So what we try to do in the next year or so is to make sure that our awareness is there on what we have, the good thing that we have, not just food, but in everything. So we have been launching a lot of program, and the program is target mostly the Thai people. Unless we can change the mentality of the, of the Thai people, nothing else can change. So we, we want to make it 
known for the Thai that we have so many great things in this country. The food, the culture, the places, um, how, how the Thai people interact with each other, with foreigners. And this is our uniqueness. And we want to develop that more and more because I think that will be our strongest selling point. I think in terms of the market segmentation, I know that in the, in the modern marketing ways, we need to have that. But looking at the market in Asia right now, we, we don't know what's going to happen. But we know that the biggest growth will be Asian. And, and we're not going to be able to manage this well unless we can do well internally ourselves. You know, when we look back at the travel industry in Thailand, it's always have been the private sector lead who take the lead. You know, Phuket was developed by a few individuals who, are, who were brave enough, and I know most of them, who start building hotels, beautiful hotels. And when it start to be successful, then the government move in, start building new airports, start flying there. You know, Samui, in a way, is a creation of one man, almost, a private sector. He's on the airline. Um, but it's always have been like that. So it's, that's, that's a good thing about Thailand. With the Thai, we are very entrepreneur. And, but I think at this stage, we need a different ball games. We need a proper master plan. We cannot do things like we used to. The government need to come in, and the government is now working on a plan for a 20 years plan of tourism, which is for the first time we are doing that. I hope you don't mind, Minister, but there's have to, have to be a lot of change in the 20 years plan. Uh, what, what we need in Thailand right now, we need a second Phuket, we need a third Phuket, we need a second Samui, we need a third Samui, and we need to make it make it known that we have a lot to offer. The new group of people who come to this country, they're not just stay in big destination. They travel. They go to small villages. Uh, one of the most popular places that people can now go to Chiang Mai is to spend a week looking after the elephant. And, and we need to make sure that we can do a lot of these little things better and to do this well, we need to change the mind of the local people. And I think in Thailand it may be easier to do. And we are in the process of doing that. We have launched a lot of campaign now about Thailand and to the Thai people. Okay. Um, time is running out. <laughs> so my last word we will we'll say following Kun, Kun Chanin is that um, um, this year TAT has launched a campaign called Local Experience. This is to follow with the amazing Thailand, meaning that um, we would like to take our tourists to other destination, new destination. This will follow with the 12 new places last year and another 12 new places this year. But this is not only just a gimmick to extend the stay. For example, last year we introduced Lampang, this year Lampun. These are connected to Chiang Mai. So you, you can, if you stay seven days in Chiang Mai, maybe one more day in Lampang. This year, maybe one more day in Lampun. But as I said that it is our duty to take care of the community also. So meaning that a uh, local experience will benefit two ways. In order to show more product, to attract people to come to Thailand, but then at the same time to strike the sustainability by wealth distribution. With the local experience, we should be able to give additional income to the less fortunate places, the little villages. That normally they depend on the price of the rice, the price of the rubber tree, the price of something that always fluctuate every year. And therefore, we are working closely to make sure that tourism will benefit more people. 
And if we can reduce the gap between the super rich and the very poor, that in the bigger picture of the country, we should be able to create the, the peace and sustainability of the country. The last thing that I would like to, to let you know, we are not perfect. If you think about weak point of Thailand and the Thai people, you can spend days gossiping about us. But then at the same time, I believe we do have something also. I believe with the passion, as I have said from the beginning, because tourism is not only just a matter of money, but of course we need to make some profit. But we believe that the key point of us, we do tourism with heart. We love to serve people. We love our friends. Friend is very important to the Thai people. I think that is the key. The Thai people love to take care of you, everyone. The logo, the new logo of Amazing Thailand, you might have seen already. If you, you're not, you're going to see at the video at the end. It's a smiling face. We are still the land of smile. And we will make sure that the young generation of us will carry on the torch. We do it with heart. And we, but the difference between the past and now and the future is that we will work as a team. We will collaborate. We will have a better plan. We will make it as a um, long-term planning, medium planning, and action plan to make sure that we will go in the right direction. Make sure that the tourism will not destroy the village. Make sure that more people will benefit. And so that at the end, everyone will be happy to stay and visit us in this amazing Thailand. The, the video that we will show is at the moment on CNN. It's another amazing story of Thailand and telling you why we are working, as he said, we have so many things to tell you. I'm in this little person, Thai fabric. This is also another thing. We are taking people to buy more of the handicraft of Thailand. The, the Thai fabric, normally done by the villagers in the little village. And we have so many patterns, so many amazing Thai fabric to share and to, to take people to explore many communities. And that will probably will be the ending of, of my presentation of amazing stories of amazing Thailand. Before we start the, um, before we start the video, uh, I would like to thank uh, both Kun Chenin and uh, Minister Gop Khan uh, for your time today. And it has been a very knowledgeable session. Thank you very much and Kop Kun Kap Hom. Thai fabric. The work is diligent. From growing to harvesting, dyeing, weaving, and lacing. All crafted by hand. The same hand used in sculpturing, doll making, or tattooing. The color dye comes from fruits, shells, roots, leaves, and even mud, which can be used for facial treatment. Thai fabric is a part of the Thai life. We pay respect by draping it on statues, pagodas, spirit houses, boats, as talisman for combat. For the theater. Thai fabric, beautiful for the royal ceremony. For dancing in the street, wear it to school. For the meeting, for the mall, on the plane, in Milan, Paris, New York, or even on Miss Universe. This is the story of Thai fabric. There are thousands of other stories to discover. Discover your amazing stories in Amazing Thailand. So that's all about the growth of tourism industry and the knowledgeable session. So now that we've listened to the growth of tourism industry,